Welcome to IPSE's Leader Course Series. In this module, we will introduce you to IPSE. We will also show you how it can improve your ability to assess the readiness of your unit and present functions and capabilities. IPSE allows commanders and leaders to visualize their units through analytics, automating workflow, and simplifies personnel and pay actions which impact unit readiness. This is the first step to enhanced capability. As a commander or leader, it is important that you know and understand this new system and how it pertains to you. IPSE is revolutionizing how the Army operates and replaces out-of-date systems such as eMilpo, RLAS, Topmas, EDAS, and more with a 21st century human resource pay and talent management system. IPSE is the vehicle to deliver talent management over time, increasing our overall efficiency, and more importantly, helping our commanders and leaders make informed decisions for a more ready force. Visibility of the total army will be realized. For the first time, commanders and leaders will have visibility of their entire formation to include attachments from other components and or units while at home, training, or in deployed environments. In this course, we will cover authoritative data sources, accessing IPSE, navigation and manager self-service, personalization, delegation, workflow and approvals, PARs and awards, absences and special pay, promotions and flags, talent management, KSBs and civilian employment, readiness and manning, DD-93, purse tempo, readiness roster, and duty status, analytics and HR reports, help center, Please note, throughout this course, we will refer to soldiers as members because that is the terminology used by Oracle PeopleSoft system. IPSE compiles information from different systems or authoritative data sources, also referred to as ADS. For Release 3, there are 33 inbound interfaces that send authoritative data to IPSE, and IPSE sends information to 49 outbound interfaces. We will briefly describe the most critical interfaces and the data they send to IPSE in the Authoritative Data Sources module later in this series. You can access IPSE from your personal computer, smartphone or tablet, or government device, allowing you to work from anywhere at any time. This concludes the overview of IPSE. In this module, we will describe the Authoritative Data Sources, or ADS, that IPSE uses in Release 3. There are two important things for you to understand. Inbound interfaces provide data to IPSE from other systems or authoritative data sources. Outbound interfaces transmit data from IPSE to other systems that is necessary to perform critical functions. Knowing this will assist you when performing actions in IPSE. For Release 3, there are 33 inbound interfaces that send authoritative data to IPSE and IPSE sends information to 49 outbound interfaces. We will briefly describe the most critical interfaces and the data they send to IPSE. The Army Organization Server Data Interface, or AOSDI, is the ADS for the Army's authorized force structured data. IPSE's organization data comes from AOS and derivative UIC, or Unit Identification Code, also comes from AOS. In IPSE, a slot or position can only be occupied by one soldier. No more double slotting. Template is an acronym for temporary billet, and AOS uses template positions for manning above authorized strength. These positions must be built in AOS for use in IPSE. The information your training NCOs and S3s make in the Digital Training Management System, or DTMS, on individual weapons qualification and physical fitness is sent and updates IPSE. The Army Training Requirements and Resource System, or ATARS, updates IPSE when soldiers complete military education or schools such as airborne. 
Defense Information Security System, or DISS, sends individual security clearance information. Certain soldier medical information is sent to IPSE from the Medical Protection System, or MedPros. Of note, IPSE does not display information protected by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, better known as HIPAA. Commanders can access detailed unit medical readiness information from their commander's medical readiness portal through MedPros. In all cases, IPSE displays the data received from the ADS. Each interface sends data to IPSE at different times. Most are sent in the evening or early morning hours. Once received, IPSE processes the data and loads it into its respective place in the system. This process of sending, receiving, processing, and loading means that data sent from inbound interfaces is not real-time and will be updated the next time the interface runs. If data requires correction, the authoritative data source must be updated so that it reflects properly in IPSE. For example, to add template positions, AOSDI must be updated. The next time the AOSDI interface runs, the updated template information will be sent to IPSE. Once the templates appear in IPSE, they can be used for assignment actions by unit HR professionals. IPSE also sends information to other ADSs called outbound interfaces. There are 49 outbound interfaces in Release 3. The most significant are the Defense Joint Military Pay System, Active and Reserve Component Systems, or DJMS-AC and DJMS-RC. These systems are what pays soldiers. IPSE updates the pay system automatically when certain transactions are approved and executed in IPSE. Here are some examples of pay impacting transactions in IPSE. In the assignments module, when an individual is transferred to a different UIC or state, IPSE will automatically update DJMS. As another example, placing a member on an extended active duty tour or attendance to basic training will automatically trigger a pay transaction from IPSE to DJMSRC. Updates to a member's mailing and thrift savings plan, addresses, name, and gender will also drive an update to the pay system automatically. IPSE processes start and stop actions for aviation career, crew flight, non-crew flight, parachute duty, and demolition incentive pays. Changes to seniority date, officer's federal service dates and grade, as a result of promotion, updates a soldier's pay automatically. The full list of pay impacting transactions are displayed on the screen. You can pause the video to review the information. This concludes the module on authoritative data sources. In this module, we will show you how to access IPSE. There are multiple ways you can log into IPSE. To sign in on any internet connected device using a CAC reader, simply insert your CAC and follow the instructions you see on the screen. When selecting a certificate, make sure you choose your authentication certificate. To sign in on a device without a CAC reader, like a smartphone or tablet, you can use a DS logon username and password to access your record. The easiest way to access IPSE from your phone is to download the IPSE mobile app. Keep in mind that updating member data or approving actions can only be done when accessing IPSE using a CAC. Self-service access is automatically granted to every soldier. Elevated access for commanders, leaders, HR professionals, etc requires training, permissions, and validation by your unit validator prior to being granted elevated access. Requests are placed and submitted through the Access Request tile found on the self-service homepage. Once the request has been placed, it is processed by a validator of the user's organization. Elevated user accounts are locked after 60 days of inactivity. However, you will always have self-service access even if you have not logged into IPSE after 60 days. Self-service access is never locked. In order to restore your elevated access, you will have to submit a new access request 
or ask your validator to submit an access request on your behalf. Dual status technicians or military personnel who work in a civilian capacity and require access to IPSE must have a second CAC. This allows separation of military and civilian roles, proper permissions, and auditability. When logging in, dual persona users must select the appropriate CAC or certificate for the persona or role that they need to access. The persona is either soldier, civilian, or contractor. Dual role refers to a soldier who uses IPSE in both full-time and M-Day or TPU position. These users will receive the highest level of permissions within their two roles. This concludes the module on accessing IPSE. Be sure to review the self-service module so that you will be in the know with what everyone can see in IPSE. In this module, we will cover IPSE's navigation and the Manager Self-Service homepage. Please note, in IPSE, commanders are considered managers and soldiers are considered members. Throughout this course, we will refer to soldiers as members because that is the terminology used by the Oracle PeopleSoft system. PeopleSoft is the software that runs IPSE. Both commanders and managers have access to review and approve personnel actions and special pay requests, recommend approval or denial of actions through workflow, and view a member's profile information. A commander has additional access to update flags, perform decentralized promotions, approve HR action requests, and view data on their assigned soldiers related to physical information, restrictions, and talent. Once you are signed in, you will arrive at the self-service homepage. This is where you will submit requests such as PARs or absences for yourself and view your personal information. Let's navigate to the Manager Self-Service homepage. Select Manager Self-Service from the Self-Service drop-down menu. This is your homepage for all leader duties. You can personalize this page by adding, deleting, or moving tiles. We will go over customizing your homepage in the personalization video. From the Manager Self-Service homepage, you can access the different applications within IPSE and navigate through the system using the five icons in the top right corner. Let's take a moment to explain these icons, starting with the Home icon. The Home icon will always return you to the Manager Self-Service homepage. Next is the Global Search icon, which looks like a magnifying glass. This is a search tool that lets you narrow in on the correct page you are looking for using keyword searches. Next is the notification icon, which looks like a flag. This shows you alerts and notifications of actions that need your approval. Then there is the action list icon, the three vertical dots. This is where you will personalize your homepage, set your preferences, search training products to help understand the system, and sign out. Lastly, there is the nav bar icon, which looks like a compass. You will use this to navigate to different areas in IPSE through a set of menu paths that open on the right side of the screen. Most of your navigation will be done with the tiles on your various home pages. Everything else will go through the nav bar. Let's quickly take a look at the different tiles available to you on your homepage. The My Team tile displays a list of your respective soldiers. From here, you can view their department and location information, contact information, and access certain actions such as absence requests in time management or the soldier's talent summary. Select the Duty Status roster to display your soldier's current duty status. To view PARs, absences, or assignments that require action on your part, select the Approvals tile. The Pending Approvals page displays all workflow actions that require your input as a reviewer, intermediate approver, or approver. To manage your soldier's absences, select the Absence Management tile. The Team Time page displays, allowing for the creation, 
editing and approval of your soldiers' absences. To see a list of IPSE's related training information for your direct reports, select the Team Learning tile. The Team Learning page displays. As a commander, you can enroll your direct reports in IPSE training. To manage a soldier's personnel action request, select the HR Personnel Actions Request tile. The Personnel Search page displays where you can search for, then enter, view, or modify a soldier's personnel action request, or PAR. From the Manager Self Service homepage, select the Special Pay Requests tile. From the IPSE Earning and Deductions page, Members and HR professionals can initiate field duty, incentive pays, and special pays. To access the awards eligibility roster, select the Awards Roster by Department tile. From this roster, you can view, approve, or deny the Army Good Conduct Medal, Army Reserve Achievement Medal, and the Armed Forces Reserve Medal. To view Decentralized Promotion Rosters, select the Promotion Rosters tile. From the Manage Decentralized Roster page, you can search for and display Decentralized Promotion Rosters. Semi-Centralized and Centralized Rosters are accessed through the navbar. To access your Soldier's Person Profile, select the Profile Management tile. From the Person Profile page, leaders can view skills, competencies, accomplishments, and responsibilities of all soldiers in their unit. Select the Soldier Talent Profile tile to display a soldier's knowledge, skills, and experience. Organized in five major areas with 25 distinct topics, like awards and deployments. That was just a quick overview of what each of the tiles is used for. Don't worry, we will dive into each tile further in the rest of the modules of this series. This concludes the module on navigation and the manager self-service homepage. In this module, we will provide you with ways to personalize your homepage so that you can see what you want to see when you want to see it. On any homepage, you can arrange or personalize tiles based on your own preferences by adding or removing tiles via the Personalization Homepage screen. To access the Personalize Homepage, click on the Action List icon, then select Personalize Homepage. In the top right corner, click the Add Tile button. The Add Tile menu appears. Locate and select the tile you would like to add from the menu or search for the tile by name. The new tile is now added to the home page. If you need to delete a tile, click on the circled X in the top right-hand corner, and it will automatically be sent to the tile repository. Deleted tiles can be retrieved by re-adding the tile. By selecting the Edit icon in the lower right corner, the Selection Action menu appears. Select the Move To or Copy To option. Then select the home page you want to copy or move the tile to. The tile will be there the next time you access the home page. You can rearrange the tiles on home pages by dragging and dropping the tile into the new location. The same can be done from home page to home page by simply dragging and dropping the tile onto the home page's tab location. Once you are satisfied with the arrangement of your home page, select the Save button located on the top right corner of the screen. The updated home page now appears. Now let's look at how to create and save favorites. You have the ability to add a favorite transaction using the nav bar to navigate to transactions. Let's review these steps. Once you open the nav bar, a set of icons will display. Select the Navigator icon, which brings up another set of menu items. These menu items depict the application modules in IPSE. In this example, we will set the favorite to Manage Delegation. From this menu, select Self-Service, and another set of menu items will display. Then select Manage Delegation. 
Once the Manage Delegation page opens, select the Action List icon. Notice how the menu options are different than what was demonstrated earlier. The new menu options are as follows. Add to Homepage, Add to Navbar, Add to Favorites. In this example, once Add to Favorites has been selected, the system will display the Add to Favorites box, prompting you to give the favorite a description. Type in a short description and click Add. The system will then notify you that the favorite has been updated. Click the OK button. A shortcut has been added to the My Favorites list located in the nav bar. This concludes this module on personalization and favorites. In this module, we will cover how to assign a delegate in IPSE. As a commander, you can choose to remain in the workflow or to delegate your authority to approve transactions to a designated individual. If you do set up a proxy or delegate, they will be able to approve or deny actions requested by your unit's members on your behalf. To establish your proxy or delegate, you will need to navigate to the Manage Delegation page, which is accessed from the nav bar. Just remember, as a commander, you have to initiate the delegation, and your proxy or delegate will have to accept the delegation. Also, your delegate must complete the IPSA's leader course in order to assume these responsibilities. Let's navigate to the Manage Delegation page using the favorite shortcut set up in the last lesson. Select the My Favorites icon. Your saved favorites are displayed. Select the Manage Delegation link. From the Manage Delegation page, the following links are available. Learn more about delegation and Create Delegation Request. To create a request, click the Create Delegation Request link. When creating a delegation request, the first step is to set a time period for the delegation by specifying the from and to date, then select Next. You can select the types of transactions to delegate to your proxy, while also retaining the transactions you want to personally review. In this example, we will delegate the absence actions. After you have made your selection, click Next to select your proxy. Once you have selected your proxy, you can review the delegation request before submitting. Your designated proxy must then approve the delegation request before the delegation is active. It is also important to note that your proxies must complete the IPSA's leader course in order to assume these responsibilities. Now, let's look at how to accept a delegation request. When a delegation request has been submitted, the designated delegate will receive a notification to accept the delegation request. View your notification by clicking on the alert icon. Select the Delegation of Authority request to view and accept the delegation. The delegation request displays. Review the information and the designated roles. Add approver comments and submit. Select Approve to accept the delegation. Once approved, the action will be date stamped and a notification will be sent to the originator of the delegation request. Once you have designated a proxy and or accepted a delegation request, two new menu items will appear. Review My Proxies and Review Delegated Authorities. These links will allow you to review what you are delegated and what you have delegated to others. The Review My Proxies link displays the full list of proxies and delegated actions. In this case, all of the requests are active. It is important to note that you can delegate actions to multiple proxies. However, each action can only be delegated to one proxy. You also are not restricted to choosing from your direct reports. You can designate anyone as your proxy, including your full-time staff. Let's review some delegation considerations and rules. You can delegate one proxy to each action at any time. However, you can have multiple proxies. 
just not for the same action. You can delegate proxies to either initiate or approve transactions on your behalf. Your proxies do not have to be managers or your direct reports, but all proxies are required to take IPSA's leader course and will need to have the appropriate roles to approve actions. Proxies cannot further delegate actions that have not been delegated to them. This concludes this module on delegations. In this module, we will cover workflow and approvals in IPSA. Workflow allows for the electronic routing of actions within IPSA. The Automated Workflow Engine, or AWE, provides the ability to process IPSA initiated HR actions at a more rapid pace than ever before. Members will no longer need to email or hand carry personnel actions through the approval chain. The whole transaction, from start to finish, is vastly expedited, traceable, and transparent. Members are also able to see the real-time status of their submitted actions. For ease of use, IPSA has automated the initial step for each submitted action by routing to the S1 pool or upper echelon group. The S1 pool and upper echelon are predefined groups of HR pros aligned by organization. S1 pools are usually at battalion or brigade levels. You will find upper echelon groups at non-standard organizations such as HQDA. The S1 pool will then review and initiate workflow based on local SOP. Everyone will benefit from the ability to submit or review actions regardless of their location or time of day. As a commander, you will be able to modify the workflow process as allowed by your unit SOP. Commanders will be able to delegate authority by creating proxies or delegates. Delegating authority is covered in the delegation module of this course. Commanders will approve assignments, personnel action requests, or PARs, and special pay requests from the pending approvals page. There are two ways you will be notified of actions that require their approval. You can view the approvals that require your action from the notification flag near the top right corner of the screen, or from the approvals tile on your manager self-service homepage. The tile will display a number in the lower right corner, telling you how many pending actions you have that require your attention. On the left side of the page, the approvals that need action are listed by type of approval. The list of pending approvals can be rearranged by type using the View by Type dropdown. You can view the approvals by date routed, from, requester, and type. The default view is type. Let's open the Admin Records Correction PAR. In this example, the Admin Records Correction request for PFC Fultner is displayed. From this page, you can view the approval chain or workflow, or approve, deny, or push back the action. A pushback sends the transaction back to the previous person in the workflow. This allows for the action to be modified if necessary. For a pushback, comments are recommended. If an action is denied, it cancels the transaction and the initiator is notified of that decision. Also, Justification comments are required if an action is denied. By clicking on Approval Chain, you can view the submitted actions workflow and comments. Once you are ready to approve the request, select Approve. Enter Approver comments and select Submit. If orders are generated upon approving a transaction, they will be sent to iPerms. The member's record is updated and an approval notification is sent to the member. This concludes the module on workflow and approvals. In this module, we will cover PARs and awards in IPSE. Personnel Action Requests, or PARs, are IPSE's automated DA Form 4187 and DA Form 638. PARs can be created via self-service by the member or on behalf of the member by an HR professional. The PAR is used to submit or request the following actions, awards, civilian acquired skills, request for demotion, recording disciplinary actions, request for SFPA flags, 
lateral appointment, request for name change, religious accommodations, payroll absences, special promotions, and update gender. Once a PAR is submitted by either the member or HR professional, IPSE will automatically route the action to the member's S1 pool or upper echelon group for further processing, review, and approval. Let's explore the PAR types. The Admin Records Correction PAR is the new DA Form 4187 and should be used when there is not a dedicated PAR for the member's request. Let's first look at which PARs are pay impacting. Of the 13 PAR types, eight can affect the member's pay. Pay impacting means the PAR sends a file to finance, which can affect the member's pay record to either adjust the pay amount or to provide finance with any needed administrative updates. Awards Recommendations, Qualifications and Skills PAR, Payroll Absences and Special Promotions automatically run eligibility checks based on preset configuration values for things such as flags. Five of the PARs generate orders and sends them to IPERMS on approval. All of the PARs except the Admin Records Correction PAR automatically updates the member's record. PAR approvals are covered in the Workflow and Approvals module. Let's take a look at how a PAR is initiated. From the Self-Service homepage, select the My Personnel Action Requests tile. Any previously submitted PARs will be listed on this page. To start a new PAR, click on the Create Personnel Action button. From here, you can select the PAR type. For this demonstration, we will submit a Name Change PAR. Select the PAR reason from the drop-down menu, then select Continue to enter the PAR. Enter the details of the PAR. Required fields are noted with an asterisk. Upload any attachments as required. Then click Save when finished. When you're ready to submit the PAR, click the Submit button and the PAR will automatically route to your S1 pool or upper echelon group for further processing. Once submitted, you or your soldiers can check on the status of the PAR anytime by clicking on the pending hyperlink. Now let's take a look at how IPSA processes awards. IPSA provides members, HR professionals, and commanders the capability to process awards. In this section, we will cover system-generated awards, the awards eligibility roster, and the awards PAR. Let's start with the system-generated or automated awards. Automated awards requirements are pre-configured eligibility rules that will automatically generate certain awards for members who meet the eligibility criteria. These awards include the Army Service Ribbon, the National Defense Medal, the Army Reserve Component Overseas Training Ribbon, and the Armed Forces Reserve Medal with M device. Once the member meets eligibility requirements, the system automatically generates the award and updates the member's record. System-generated awards can be checked using the My Profile tile. Now let's cover the awards eligibility roster, which is used to review, approve, or deny the Army Good Conduct Medal, Army Reserve Achievement Medal, and the Armed Forces Reserve Medal. The roster is accessed through the Awards Roster by Department tile. The award roster is generated on the first of the month, and members who meet the eligibility criteria are automatically added to the roster. The unit HR professional will then check for flags, restrictions, upload any supported documents, and create a memorandum of disqualification if necessary. Finally, commanders will approve or deny the awards for each member on the roster and counsel those who are flagged or disqualified. Upon approval, the system will automatically generate the order, update the member's record, and send the order to IPERMS. Now let's explore the Award Recommendation PAR. This PAR provides a digital DA Form 638 for soldiers. IPSA allows for the processing of individual awards from the Army Achievement Medal, 
through the Legion of Merit. Any other individual awards, including Valoris Awards, will be processed outside the system using the DA Form 638. Any member can submit an individual award for another member within their command. Let's take a look at an Army Achievement Medal that has already been submitted. Prior to entering the award into the workflow, the HR professional will check member eligibility for items such as the Army Body Composition Program and flags. Now let's look at the approval process. Once the award has been routed through the designated workflow to include reviewers and intermediate approvers as necessary, it's time for the approval authority to take action. You can either use the alerts and notification flag icon or the approvals tile on the manager homepage. Let's go to the approvals tile. Select the award that you would like to approve. After you have reviewed the request, you can approve, deny, or push back the award. On approval, the system approves the PAR and creates the order. However, the order is held until the HR professional takes action in the system to release the PAR. Once the HR professional releases the PAR to the member, or no later than 30 days from the presentation date, the order is generated and sent to iPerms and the member's record is updated. This concludes the module on PARs and awards. In this module, we will cover absences and special pay requests. First, let's talk about how your soldiers will request to leave using IPSE. In IPSE, leave is referred to as absence, which is the PeopleSoft term for leave. Throughout this video and within IPSE, you will see the term absence. IPSE's functionality allows for members to request absences from their computer or from their mobile device. Using the IPSE Absence Request, Personnel Action Request, or PAR, members are able to request all types of leave, such as chargeable, non-chargeable, and administrative. Not only does this functionality replace the DA Form 31, but it also submits the pay transaction directly to DFAS, eliminating the need for transmittal logs and runners to finance. Along with everything else in IPSE, absences are transparent, auditable, and mobile capable. That's right, no more lost leave forms. Let's take a look at how absences are requested in IPSE. Approvals are covered in the Approvals section of this training. From the self-service homepage, select the My Absences tile. From here, you can request a new absence, cancel pending absences, and view or update previously submitted requests. From the Request Absences tab, select the type of absence you are requesting. Then click Submit to begin a new absence request. The system automatically displays the Advanced Leave Disclaimer. From here, fill out the absence request, indicating the reason, dates, duration, supervisor, and location. Once you are satisfied with the request, click the Submit button to route it to your indicated supervisor. As a supervisor, you can submit, view, and approve your team's absences from the Absence Management tile. From here, you can request, cancel, or modify an absence request on behalf of your soldiers. The system automatically displays a list of your soldiers. Select the soldier whose absence you would like to view. Then select the absence request. Once approved, the absence can be managed by the S1 for approvals, departures, and more. Once the absence is complete, IPSE automatically sends the pay transaction to DJMS. This will update the member's leave or absence balance. Let's take a look at how special pay and incentive pay requests are requested and processed in IPSE. Members and HR professionals can initiate field duty, incentive pays, and special pays from the Special Pay Requests tile. Members and HR professionals can initiate field duty, incentive pays, and special pays. Incentive and special pay is available to members who work in specialized fields or in areas that qualify for additional pay. 
Members must submit an incentive or special pay request, or an HR professional can request one on their behalf. Incentive pays include aviator, demolition duty, flight duty, and parachute duty. Special pay types include hardship duty, hostile fire, and imminent danger. Similar to a PAR, once the request is submitted, the system will automatically route it to the member's S1 pool, or upper echelon group, for further processing. An HR professional will review and enter the request into the workflow for additional review and approval, according to applicable policies and SOP. Once approved, IPSA sends the transaction to DJMS to start or stop the appropriate pay and automatically publishes associated orders and sends a copy to iPerms. This concludes the module on absences and special pay. In this module, we will cover promotions and flags in IPSA. IPSA standardizes decentralized promotions while providing a framework for semi-centralized and centralized promotions. This allows flexibility to conduct promotions according to the component-specific timelines and requirements. The Promotion Rosters tile launches the Manage Decentralized Roster search page. The easiest way to find the promotion rosters for your unit is to use the Lookup tool on this page. The Lookup tool is the magnifying glass labeled Board Identifier. Click on that and you will see a list of rosters to choose from. In this example, we will look at the Private to PV2 promotion roster. The roster results display members' promotion information. You will only see members that you are authorized to view. During cutover to IPSA, promotion board rosters will be automatically created as a one-time task only. Going forward, decentralized rosters will be updated at the beginning of each month by an automatic batch process. This process adds new members who meet time in service and time in grade requirements for the upcoming month. It also adds members who meet promotion requirements with waivers and screens members for eligibility requirements. Those who fail any promotion eligibility rules will be sent to Promotion Non-Select. Now let's take a look at key information about the decentralized roster. If an eligible member on the roster needs a waiver, their status will be automatically set to Promotion Non-Select. If you want to promote them with a waiver, you must choose Waiver from the Reason dropdown and change their status to Promotion Select Waiver. Members who are fully eligible, meeting both time in service and time in grade, will have a status of promotion select. The only action you need to take is if you do not want to promote them. Promotion dates are set to the date when members are fully qualified. The date field is editable if a correction is needed, so make sure you double check the effective dates before saving the roster. Let's talk about members who are flagged. These members will still appear on the roster, but their status will be set to Promotion Non-Select. To see the flag, click on the View hyperlink under the View SFPA column. The flag and restriction data is displayed. The member cannot be promoted until the flag is removed. IPSA runs a nightly process to execute promotions. On the member's effective date of promotion, the orders are completed and sent to iPerms. The financial transaction is sent to DJMS, and the record is updated in IPSA. Finally, the member is sent a notification completing the promotion process. Now let's cover restrictions and flags or suspension of favorable actions. A restriction is used to limit or enable an action on a member and may or may not be disciplinary in nature. Placing a restriction on a member's record may affect assignments, deployments, promotions, awards, or the ability to attend military or civilian schools. Restrictions can include positive personnel or educational attributes, such as assignment considerations, limiting personnel attributes, such as religious accommodations, or family circumstances requiring specific accommodations, such as EFMP, the Married Army Couples Program, a bar to re-enlistment, or a flag or denial of an automatic promotion.
In IPSE, these are accomplished with the Personnel Action Request, or PAR. That means no more DA Form 268. Once the SFPA PAR is completed and submitted by the HR professional, it will be automatically sent to the commander for approval. Now let's look at how to initiate an SFPA PAR. From the Manager Self-Service page, select the PARs tile. After searching for the correct member, choose Miscellaneous from the Action drop-down. The reason Request for SFPA will automatically populate. Select Continue. This will take you to the SFPA PAR form. Mandatory fields are marked with an asterisk. In this example, we will enter an initial weight control flag. From here, you can preview the workflow, make corrections, and submit the PAR for approval through the workflow. Once the PAR has been submitted, it will route to the designated workflow. After approval, it will be added to the member's record. This concludes this module on promotions and flags. In this module, we will cover IPSE's talent management tools that are available to you as a leader. IPSE Release 3 provides a foundation to facilitate the Army talent alignment process across the force. IPSE's talent management tools incorporate soldiers and leaders at all levels and initiates a total force marketplace for assignments for all soldiers as well as enhanced decision-making and search and match capabilities to enable the Army to better manage the talents of the total force based on their knowledge, skills, and behaviors, optimizing soldiers' contributions to Army readiness. IPSE's talent management capabilities are organized in the Talent Management Work Center. The TAM Soldier Work Center is a one-stop shop for soldiers to manage their talent information and interact with the marketplace. Your HR professionals will have additional talent tools in the TAM Unit Work Center. Click on the TAM Soldier Work Center tile. From the Talent Management Work Center, you can view and manage your profile and soldier talent profile, participate in the marketplace, and manage your job openings. Let's explore the My Profile section. Your personnel data is organized into 13 major areas. My Profile is a repository for your HR, benefits, assignment, education, experience, and limited medical information. This data is used to create a full 360-degree view of a soldier and assists with readiness metrics, assignments, and talent decisions. Each soldier is able to self-profess certain knowledge, skills, and behaviors. This is done on the Self-Professed tab. Expanding the self-professed section reveals the different areas in which you can add relevant information. Adding this information is an integral part of the talent management process and to IPSE's search and match functionality, which we'll cover in a little bit. Let's self-profess cultural experience. Click on the Cultural Experience tab. Areas that you can modify will have an Add button. Click Add. Complete the form, noting that all required fields are marked with an asterisk. Then click Save. The cultural experience is now added to your profile. Now let's see how the profile feeds the Soldier Talent Profile, or STP. There are two ways to access the Soldier Talent Profile, here on the TAM Work Center or by selecting the Soldier Talent Profile tile on your homepage. Let's select the Soldier Talent Profile tab. The STP is the modern ORB and ERB. This holistic 360-degree view of a soldier is an interactive tool to view a soldier's experience, training, knowledge, skills, preferences, and behaviors. The Soldier Talent Profile includes the information from the ORB, ERB, as well as self-professed skills, such as additional duties, languages, experience, civilian work experience, knowledge, cultural experience, goals, preferences, and endorsements. The Open Marketplace allows a user to search any job opening that is in an open status aligned to the Open Marketplace. The Closed Marketplace is associated to the current PCS assignment cycles in AIM and Ask EM. Click on the Open Marketplace to search and view job openings. Soldiers can search and apply for any job opening in the Open Marketplace. 
or if they are being considered in a closed marketplace, as long as they pass the predetermined eligibility rules associated to the job opening. Each position or job opening can have associated knowledge, skills, or behaviors that are desired in the position. This information is found on the job opening details. Using the compare function, you can compare or match the desired attributes of the position to the KSBs of the applicant. Select the job opening, then click compare to see how well your KSBs align to the job opening. This concludes the module on IPSA's talent management. In this module, we will cover IPSA's readiness and manning tools that are available to you as a leader. IPSA delivers multiple readiness tools for leaders and HR professionals. These tools include integrated DD Form 93 process, automated duty status updates, and the readiness and manning analytics, which include the PERSTAT, readiness, and unit access dashboards. First, let's look at the DD Form 93. The DD Form 93 dashboard displays your dependent and contact information. Updates to the dependent data are done in DEERS. You can add emergency contacts in IPSE from this page. You can also start a new DD Form 93 where you can enter emergency contact information and enter beneficiaries on the Benefits Related tab. Let's look at how duty status is reported and processed in IPSE. It's important to note that the duty statuses are derived from personnel actions within IPSE and not manually entered. For example, an absence departure will automatically update the member's duty status. From the duty status roster, you can quickly navigate to other areas within IPSE using the I want to actions. Using these shortcuts, transactions such as absence, assignments, disciplinary events, and TDY can be entered on their respective pages. Now let's look at readiness and manning analytics. The readiness and manning analytics page displays your units per stat via interactive views, placed in an easy-to-use dashboard. The readiness dashboard displays interactive views that include the MRC restriction and strength and deployable information. The unit access dashboard displays the interactive views for assigned and authorized strength. This was just a preview of the analytics, readiness, and manning tools that will assist you in keeping your unit and soldiers in a ready posture. This concludes this module on readiness and manning. In this module, we will cover IPSE's analytics and HR reporting tools that are available to you as a leader. IPSE delivers analytical capabilities, which will enable commanders and leaders to make informed decisions based on HR data. In addition to the readiness and manning analytics recovered in the last lesson, you will have access to the Human Resource Authorization Report, or HRAR, which displays the unit manning queries and reports to include ad hoc queries, and the Analytics Hub. First, let's look at the HRAR. The HRAR contains four tabs, Total Strength, Slotted Soldiers, Unfilled Positions, and Grades Analysis. Each chart in the tab is interactive, you can hover over the chart to see pertinent information or drill down to see specific information. The data displayed in each tab is directly linked to the IPSE role of the person accessing the report. A company commander will only be able to see their company's information, while a brigade commander would see everyone assigned to their brigade. The HR provides multiple data displays. Here is an example of authorized and assigned strength. As covered in the navigation video, you also have access to several queries from the Manager Self-Service Dashboard. You can access IPSE's predefined queries for information, such as service data, promotion information, or personnel management, just to name a few. Additional queries are available through the Query Viewer. To get to the Query Viewer, open the nav bar and select the Navigator icon. From the menu, scroll down and select Reporting Tools. From the Reporting Tools menu, select Query. 
The Query Menu Options Display. Select Query Viewer. There are currently over 100 IPSA-specific queries available, which start with IP. From the Analytics Hub, you have access to unit strength information, such as unit information and deployable strength. From the Force Composition tab, you have access to demographic information. From the Talent Inventory tab, you will find talent management and readiness information. And from the Stress on Force tab, you can find personal and family data, deployable and non-deployable reasons. This concludes the module on Analytics and HR Reports. In this module, we will cover IPSA's customer support functionality. So why is this important to you as a commander or leader? Well, your HR professionals now have a tool to take better care of soldiers, and you have something better to see the status of your unit. Customer Relationship Management, or CRM, is IPSA's case management tool. This module provides self-service access to members and leaders, and additional case management tools to HR professionals. Let's go over self-service first. Self-service is accessed through the IPSA Help Center tile. From here, you can search IPSA's knowledge base for frequently asked questions and answers. You can also search the knowledge base for more in-depth articles. Your Help Center case history is accessed through the My Cases tile. You can also submit a case from the Create Case tile. Your case will be routed to your S1 or lowest level provider group for triage and adjudication. If you are reporting a system issue, your HR professional can route it to the IPSA IT help desk. Now let's talk about what is expected of an HR professional. As we said before, HR cases are routed to the soldier's S1 or readiness NCO. In the past, soldiers would call, text, email, or leave sticky notes to address their HR and pay issues. With IPSA, soldiers can submit a case to their servicing HR professional from their computer or mobile device and then track the progress. HR professionals access CRM from the case management tile in the HR professional dashboard. From there, HR professionals can see their assigned cases and cases assigned to other members from their provider group or section. IPSA has implemented standards of service for both HR and IT cases. You can generally expect your case to be resolved within 72 hours. Occasionally, certain errors require longer. In this course, we covered authoritative data sources, how to access IPSA, navigation, and the Manager Self-Service homepage. We looked at personalizing the homepage by setting favorites, used delegations and reviewed workflow and approvals, PARs and awards, absences, promotions, talent management, readiness and manning, analytics, reports, and lastly, IPSA's customer support functionality. This concludes our video on IPSA's customer support functionality as well as the leader's course. You now fully understand IPSA's capabilities and how to perform your day-to-day -day functions in the system. IPSA will be the new standard for HR actions and it will change the way we do business. IPSA is here. One soldier, one record, one army.